once Rome was treacherously attacked by the Gauls. The city survived thanks to heroes in feathers. In the 5th century BC, the Gauls brought many troubles to their neighbors. Those peoples who lived on the Apennine Peninsula and in Asia Minor suffered especially badly, the Gauls constantly raided, destroying the population and ravaging the cities. Thanks to their aggressiveness and constant ruinous campaigns, they were able to settle on huge territory. In the south, the Gauls had access to the Mediterranean Sea, and their northern territories extended to the Scottish Highlands. It is firmly established throughout Western Europe and in an impressive part of Eastern Europe. The Romans themselves considered Gauls only those tribes that lived on the territory of modern France and were in a state of constant hostility with them. The Romans and Gauls were destined to meet face to face for the first time in 391 BC, when the Cenan tribe led by Brennus crossed the Alps and attacked the Etruscans, devastating their cities. After defeating the Etruscans, Brennus moved south, intending to capture Rome and wipe the city off the face of the earth. 40,000 inhabitants of Rome marched to meet his army under the command of the military tribune Quintus Sulpicius. The Romans wanted to fight on distant approaches to the city. Sulpicius' army clashed with the Gauls at the place where the Allia River flows into the Tiber near Rome, on July 18, 390 BC. The Roman army was defeated by the Cenans and shamefully fled the battlefield, many in panic rushed into the water and drowned in heavy armor. Since then, July 18 has been considered a bad day by the Romans. A few days later, Brennus and his soldiers stormed into Rome and began a bloody massacre. The Gauls broke into houses, raped women, and killed children. The Gauls brutally dealt with almost all the senators of Rome. The surviving residents were able to take refuge on Capitol Hill in the fortress, which they continued to hold. The siege of the capital lasted six months, and the defenders were able to repel all attempts by the Gauls to take it by storm. The Romans were malnourished, sleep-deprived and under constant stress, which affected the physical and moral qualities of their ranks. And one night there was an incident that started a whole legend. In the dead of night, the Gauls, having made sure that the defenders of the fortress were asleep, got out from under the rock, which was located under the capital. The soldiers below supported the attackers by handing them swords and spears. Brennus believed that due to the effect of surprise, he would be able to kill the remaining defenders of Rome. Almost noiselessly, the Gauls placed ladders against the walls of the fortress and began to climb. No one heard the approach of the enemies. With the exception of the sacred geese, which were in the temple of the goddess Juno, the patroness of motherhood and marriage. They began to cackle, which woke up the sleeping guards. That's how the alarm was given. The Romans awoke from their sleep and were able to repel the enemy's attack. Since that very night, the saying has been known, geese saved Rome. The Romans usually used this expression when a certain random event helped them avoid serious trouble and save their lives. Realizing that the Gauls would not be able to take Rome in the near future, Brennus negotiated with the Romans to lift the siege in exchange for an impressive indemnity. The city withstood the onslaught of the Gauls, and the bitter lessons of this war contributed to its early strengthening. According to one version, dictator Marcus Furius Camillus was able to assemble an army in a short time and attack the soldiers of Brennus, expelling them outside Rome. The ancient Roman historian Titus Livius, in his history from the founding of the city, said that Lucius Valerius, who led the Roman cavalry, helped Camilla drive away the Gauls. The story of the sacred geese is also mentioned. In the story How the Geese Saved Rome, Leo Tolstoy adheres to the version set out by Titus Livy and mentions the role of sacred birds. Tolstoy also talks about the feast in honor of the goose saviors, where they are honored. At the same time, dogs that have overslept the Gauls' advance are beaten with sticks. In addition to Tolstoy, Ivan Krulov mentions the geese who saved Rome from destruction in his fable Geese, they introduce this story into their works to ridicule certain vices of society.